All right, before we dive into to, uh, converting equations into vertex form, I decided I would split the videos according to the math labs because that might be easier for you to look up what you need when you need it. So this, uh, everything I'm going to talk about in here is going to lead directly to you doing Math Lab 3A. So we're going to start by talking about the characteristics um, of a quadratic function. So we're assuming, first of all, that we have our quadratic function in vertex form. So it's ready to go and we're going to graph it. And as we talked about in the last video, we know our vertex. We know our axis of symmetry. And note, it's always going to ask for the equation of the axis of, axis of symmetry. So don't just write a number. You need to write x equals a number. That whole thing has to be there. You're writing the equation of the line. Um, we talked about a max or a min. And you would have to say which which it is, and you would say that it is at Q, because that's the highest or lowest point. Now, let's talk about, for a minute, the A value. What in the world does A do for us in this form of the equation? What would happen if A was zero? What if we had an equation that looked like that? You know zero times anything is zero. So really, this becomes that. And you know 0 plus q is just q. If a is 0, we end up with an equation where it's just y equals a number. And if you think back to everything you've done in graphing, it's a horizontal line. OK? So when a is 0, we end up with no parabola. We don't end up with a quadratic anymore. When a is positive, we end up with a parabola that opens up. And in fact, the further A gets from zero, the narrower that parabola gets. And likewise, less than zero opens down. And the further from zero, the narrower it gets again. So what I used to do in a classroom is I would say, OK, A is zero. We have a horizontal line at whatever Y equals. Now, if A is a positive value, we get a parabola, and the bigger A gets, the narrower the curve gets. A is 0, big, big, big positive A. A is 0. If A is negative, parabola opens down, and the further A is from 0, so negative 2, 3, 4, 5, da, 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 the narrower it gets, continuing to open down. That's what A does for us for our sketches. Now, we also need to talk about things like domain. And range. And I'm going to clean up some of this. If I draw a parabola, I put arrows on the end. And that's important. Because it's telling you, the viewer, that my parabola is going to continue forever. So the, do the domain is if you could zoom in and look at every little point on this parabola, what are all the numbers that x can be? And what you'd find out, because this parabola doesn't it doesn't come back to itself, right? It gets wider. Even if it's slowly, it gets wider and wider and wider to infinity, which means x can be every number we have. And the way we represent that is we say x is an element of the real numbers. And that's a funny r. It is, um, but it has to be a funny R because that's a symbol we use in math, and it's important that we use that symbol. Range is our Y values. Remember, we have something called a max or a min. If it's opening up, this is a min. This is my minimum. And if you think about what minimum means, that's the smallest. So Q is the smallest Y value we have. So it's going to play a part in my range. So, yeah. My range is always going to be y something so q. There, oh, if this curve opens up, then my y values are going to be greater than or equal to q. And they are real numbers. And you should have all of that as a part of your answer. If it opens down, 
then the y values are less than or equal to q. You have to think about the symbols that we're using in there. And that leaves us with the number of x-intercepts. Now, if you think about what x-intercepts are, this, is, this part is actually super easy. Uh, I'll put it here. There, there's, you, I could write out a bunch of rules, but I'd rather you just think about it. X-intercepts are where does my curve hit the x-axis, right? And all we're asking is the number of. How many times does this uh, parabola hit the x-axis? And if, so if it opens up, we might have two. We might have one. We might have none. And the same thing happens when it opens down. So what you have to do is have a look at your sketch or think about it in your head or whatever makes sense for you to figure out whether it is a zero, a one, or a two situation. And that's what you're going to give for the number of x-intercepts. That covers most of that. Oh, and then we need two. So clear the page. What if I give you information about a curve? I have a parabola. that has a vertex at 2, 1. And I know it also hits, um, let's say, 4, 7. I'm making this up so it could get messy. And we're supposed to say, hey, what's the equation? What's the quadratic function look like? We know, oops. Well done. That we have this basic vertex form. We know that the vertex fills in P and Q. So there's halfway. And when you're doing something for hand in, at least get that far. Get some marks, even if you forget what to do next. But the fact is, we also know this other point. And every ordered pair is really an x and a y value. So we can take this other ordered pair. Yeah, I guess if, if that's the case, that it were to be 7, no. And I can put 4 in for x. Then Oops. We have all the <clears throat> and 7 in for y. Now this plus one, I'm going to subtract to get rid of the four I divide. Always reduce a fraction. There's my a value. And what does that mean? My, the equation of my function looks like that. And in a few places, you're going to see, hey, use some graphing technology. When you do all this, if you want to check it, I love Desmos.com. Which if I take this equation, y equals 3 halves. So I could go 1.5, but I think, I, yeah, I can go 3 halves. X, I got a peak back, minus 2. To do an exponent, there's that hat on top of the 6. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's gone. It's decided where it wants my brackets. Let's put them there, please. Squared. And then it was plus 1. Yeah. There's the curve. Now, remember, we were writing with a vertex of 2, 1, and hits 4, 7. There's my vertex. Does it also hit 4, 7? Sure does. So Desmos.com can help you wrap your head around what you're seeing, what you're, and anywhere it says use technology, that's a great spot uh, to, to head to. Oh, and the magic formula. Get out of my way, and let's clear the page one more time. What if 
I tell you, we have a function and I'm going to make it up again. And what I want you to do is find the vertex. So we could do what we're going to learn in the next video or uh, called complete the square. We could graph it and try and guess from the graph, but some of the vertices are very messy and hard to guess. Or if you happen to be working through some, some notes and whatnot, there is a formula. And this formula comes from um, a process called completing the square using the variables in it, which is um, fun for people who love math, but there you go. You get to just use it. What does this give you? The X value of the vertex. So it's not the whole vertex, but it's the X value. So let's try that. X equals B is right here. So I've got negative 2 over 2. And this 2, two against an A means 2 times A. A is negative 7. I'm going to have a negative over a negative. So those can go away. That's positive. Negative divided by negative is positive. And I have 2 over 14 which of course we would reduce to one seventh. So I know the vertex is one over seven. How do you find this something? Well, we know the equation of this function and now we know the X value. So we can put that negative or that one over seven in where X is and use our amazing math skills or our calculator. Now, no, this is 21 over seven. If I did that right in my head, there's the vertex. And that should be the gist of what you need to get through the math lab. There's some word problems that then apply all of this, but that should give you some direction at least.